Hi, I'm Ron Clark. Wow, you finished step six, huh? Ah, now on to step seven. Let's talk about step six a little bit here. Um, the work you did with um, the magic action really prepares you for physical magical action. Tripolar awareness is the essence of magical action, essentially, and you'll need that for what comes. Um, this is the state of awareness you need to be in when you do any act of magic, such as creating an elementary in the next step, okay? Uh, so, you, that's, uh, it's an essential uh, ability for magic. Um, and this meditation you've gone through on the mental body and the senses in the mental body and etc. You're, you're learning more and more about your mental body, which is great because in this step, step seven, you're going to need to develop the mental equilibrium of the element. So all of this work, you know, has definitely been for a reason. And the work with the ether uh, just sort of opens a whole new chapter in your magical training. Because now you understand the ether and how to work with the ether. And that's going to be handy in all of the exercises to come, to know that you have that resource where you can go into the ether and create the causation that you are mastering these exercises and it speeds things up greatly. So never forget that in the future work you're doing. Every time you come up to a challenge, you know, the ether is there to be used in this way. And hopefully, uh, you worked with creating elementals. Now, that work was with the light. I'll talk about that a little more as I get into step seven. So, step seven. No idea how long it's going to take you. Um, I think six months is, a, at this point in your development, a good amount of time. It may take you a lot longer. It might take a year, a year and a half, etc. Just whatever it takes is what you got to do. Because it is, again, vitally important that you master the work in this step. It's just essential. There is no real further progress without mastery of the exercises of this step. Just like... No real further progress if you haven't mastered step six. So if you haven't mastered step six, then hold off. Hold off. Keep working at it until you are truly ready. Okay? So, step seven. Step seven involves three uh, basic um, areas of development. Number one in the mental exercise is the mental equilibrium of the elements. Number two in the astral is the development of the astral or, or subtle senses. And number three in the physical is creating elementaries. Okay? So, I am again not breaking this down for you. I mean, you're more than capable of doing that for yourself. Besides, they don't break down into do this and this and this in the same, you know, meditation session like... It just doesn't work that way. So, uh, mental equilibrium of the elements. To start out with, you need to do a very uh, deep uh, meditation with this razor focus on the elements as they relate to your mind or mental body. The four aspects of your mind have to be assigned to the elements which you did in the last step, okay? Now, you have to evaluate the ratio of the elements in your mental body. 
you know, are you real fiery, more fiery than, than earthy, more earthy than watery? You know, uh, each element you must evaluate and clearly perceive the balance of elements. What is your balance of elements like? What are strong? What are weak? Etc. It was very much like the step one analysis of the astral personality. Here, you're going to perform the same analysis, so it's a little bit different, because you're really just looking at the, the relative ratio of elements. What you want eventually is to bring them all up to the same level. There's no taking down of a strong element here. There is only bringing up of the weak elements. So if you're super strong fire, you're going to need to bring up the air, water, and earth in your mental body. And this is done, well, first you go through the analysis, and then, like with the early work with the personality, you go to making changes. Analysis, then making changes. And here, you have to design and implement exercises that address any imbalance of the elements, that, that strengthen any weak elements. And Barden gives some examples, you know, good examples, they, they all work. Um, but remember, you have the Akasha to rely on, and I think this will be most helpful here, especially with any weak elements, you can, through the Akasha, rapidly and greatly build up an elemental imbalance to a balanced state using the Akasha. Okay? So don't forget about the Akasha. Do the elemental exercises too. They're very good, you know, but consider using the Akasha. Um, now, the mental equilibrium of the elements is a permanent thing, unlike the astral equilibrium, which is always, you know, taking your micro adjustments to the astral personality to keep it in balance, to keep that balance fluid. But with the mental body, this is going to be more permanent, because once you raise the element up, it stays up. It's not something you have to constantly be attending once you achieve the equilibrium. So that's the goal of this step, and that's a big goal in general. Um, so, I mean, that can take a long time, or it can be really quick. <laughs> you know, it just all depends on you and what the elemental balance is at this stage in your development. And now, going on to the astral exercises. I'm going to read you a little bit of what I wrote here. Note. Most of you will have naturally developed astral senses to, to a greater or lesser degree. Uh, that's true of probably the majority of initiation into Hermetic students of this level. I mean, it's just a commonality we all have. We all have usually at least one sense that is has always been with us since childhood. You know, we've always been able to tell something about, you know, we've always heard or seen, you know, okay? So, these are the senses that you're going to develop. And no matter how naturally developed any of your senses are, and that's Claire seeing, Claire hearing, and Claire touch feel. These are the three senses we're going to work with. But no matter how developed they are naturally or at this moment, now is when you want to take the opportunity to make sure that you have control over all three of these senses at least. So you want to have a fully developed clairvoyance, their audience, and their sentience, okay? And Barden gives some very good exercises for all these things. Uh, let's see here. And keep in mind, 
that we're developing these three senses is what we're focusing on. But there are a lot more senses. There are, you know, Claire smell and Claire taste, to name just two. But there's also the ability to see essential meaning, you know, which is sort of a part of clairvoyance, but it's a different sense that we have available to us. So keep in mind that there are more than just the three. So you may want to develop the other senses and they'll become obvious to you at this point. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so with the clair sight now, the exercises involve the light and um, accumulating light and condensing light it said and moving it around. Now, this is sort of a new thing if you didn't do any of the work with the elementals in the previous step. Because um, they are composed of light, of uh, just plain light. Uh, <clears throat> light is sort of a misleading term. It's not very exact. It's more like brilliance than it is light, because it doesn't have any color and seemingly no substance to it. But at the same time, you can accumulate it, you can condense it, you can create very dynamic um, quantities of light, or brilliance is what I prefer to call it, is brilliance. Because it is, it's brilliant. You know, it has the same effect as light does, really, you know the brilliance, <laughs> um, but it doesn't have any of the uh, qualities of light, really. It's, um, it permeates any substance, whereas light doesn't, okay? Um, so, <clears throat> you'll be dealing with the light here. Uh, so, if you didn't do the work with the elementals, you're going to have to learn about the light now. And I suggest that you do that before you begin these experiments. Um, should be fairly simple for you, fairly quick. It is a substance like the elements and the vital energy. And you can deal with it just like the elements and the vital energy. You can manipulate it in the same way, okay? So it should take you very little time to get in contact with the brilliance itself, okay? Uh, let's see. And, you know, in this process, you need to become a master of the brilliance in the same way that you have become a master of the elements, you know, to the same degree as you, your work with the elements. You need to be able to do the same things with the brilliance. So that's sort of a hidden amount of work in there if you didn't do the work with the elementals. But if you did, you know, then this should be no problem because you will have learned all these things in the work with the elementals in the last step. Uh, <clears throat> and the brilliance, it should be said, is the root of the fire element. That's why this association with uh, clairvoyance and the light, the brilliance. Okay, now um, the exercises in clair hearing are very straightforward and the work with the elements and the little cotton swabs plugged in the ears, this works wonders. It very rapidly will, uh, well, probably will uh, develop your clairaudience. Clairaudience. Um, <clears throat> now, <clears throat> an interesting point to make here. Barden explains these exercises in the slow way. In that, you know, you inhale the air element, you then focus the air element into the cotton swabs along with the information, but you, you don't need to do that. I mean, you've mastered the elements, so you don't need to inhale elements and direct it into the 
cotton swabs, you know, you can have the elements in the cotton swabs in a split second. It's not, you don't have to go through these old processes that you use to learn how to employ the elements. You can just simply employ them. Now, Barden wrote that way, and it, it continues throughout the rest of initiation into Hermetics. You know, he wrote that way because he's writing not only just for you, but for the passive reader. You know, the person that picks up the book and reads through all the steps to give them some idea of these processes. But for you, it's not necessary, you know. <laughs> The initiated rest of initiation into Hermetics would have taken far fewer words, far fewer pages than it does at present. Okay. Uh, so that's clear hearing. Now clear feeling. <clears throat> um, this is mostly the water element and the earth element at the same time. And this by clear feeling it means um, you know, you, you hold on to something. I can now sense where this paper has been. Okay, you know, I, you for me at least, it's touch. So I can touch this crystal and, oh yeah, I can see where it came from, the volcano that it came from, and the process it went through to end up as this sphere. Oh my. Um, so, that's clairsentience. Um, now, Barden says in, in his description that, you know, there's different areas of the body can be clairsentient depending on your elemental balance. So, you might be predominantly an air person. You know, you might hold it right up here. So, you hold the thing and you sense things about it. Or, if you're more fire element, it might be up here on your forehead. You know, more water element, it might be down by your gut. More earth element, it'll be your hands. And this is how I was born. <laughs> I am uh, strong in the earth element. And I have always been strong in the earth element, uh, among other elements. But, uh, sort of my proclivity from birth was with the earth. That's why I do so many things with my hands, make so many things. And so, you know, I've just always been clairsentient through my hands. But again, you know, when I came to this point in the training, I, you know, I knew I was clairsentient in my hands and could sense things. Um, but I hadn't really developed a sense. I had no real control over the sense. And this is what these sensory exercises are about. Um, even if you already have that sense uh, available to you, this uh, refines it. It puts it in your control. So I can turn it on or turn it off anytime I want. And this is especially important in clairvision. You know, you want to be clairvoyant by choice so that you are not slave to your clairvoyance. You can turn it on, you can turn it off. And that's often the most difficult part here is learning to turn it off. Okay, so with these exercises you gain that control. And you can call it up anytime you want in an instant and turn it off just as quickly. Okay, so, uh, uh, and uh, these regions of the body where one is necessarily more sensitive clairvoyantly, you can cultivate these different types of clairvoyant, types of clairsentience. So, you know, if, it, if you don't have clairsentience in your hands, but it's up at your forehead, you can train the clairsentience into your hands. So, and believe me, that's a lot more convenient and public, you know, instead of 
holding everything to your forehead or to your heart or to your stomach, you know, it's uh, less obvious to other people that you're doing something unusual, okay? Which is important to the magician. Uh, we don't want to be flashy and, you know, show off what we're doing. We want it to be a private thing, you know, to... If it's something that needs to be known publicly, we can make it known publicly. But it's very seldom that it's something that needs to be known publicly. So we develop these ways to do it in private, to our own uh, private self, okay? Now, uh, yeah, the physical section is on creating elementaries. Um, again, I should say that these are elective uh, things, they are not requirements, but, at least as Barden wrote, Initiation into Hermetics. But if it was up to me, <laughs> your heartless taskmaster, I would make it a requirement, you know, an absolute necessity. Um, it's such a fundamental part of what it means to be a magician. Uh, oof, I can't imagine uh, accomplishing the things I have accomplished without the aid of an elementary. So, what's the difference between an elemental in step six and an elementary in step seven? The elementals of step six are composed of just the brilliance, that's all. Oh well, you know, an affirmation, and a direction, etc. You know, an input of will. But they are composed only of the brilliance and they are functional only on the mental plane. They're only effective to influence someone at a mental level. They can eventually influence things at the astral and physical level, but that takes a lot of time. Um, and the impetus is always at the mental level. That's their area of effect. Everything else is consequential. Now an elementary is composed of the brilliance, and the four elements. So it's a composite of four elements plus the life breath of the brilliance. It is a fully living thing. It has a physical basis. Most often it can have, it can be only astral or only mental, but still it consists of the four elements plus the brilliance. It is a life form. Now, I think Barden used the term elementals in the last step to mean something simple, something fundamental, rudimentary. You know, not that it is in relation to the elements. It's only here in step seven that an elementary is composed of the elements. So, elementals doesn't mean elements. Elementaries does. And I think it might even have been something in the translation. I'm not sure. So, <clears throat> that's an important point. Um, now, the work with the elementaries, I mean, you create assistance, basically. Living assistance that you can send out to carry out certain tasks. You either are far or where you uh, live, you know, uh, your, your imagination is free here. Uh, your creativity is free. You can create any elementary to do anything you want. Um, and its effectiveness depends entirely on you um, as the creator, okay? Now, elementaries aside from being an assistant, are also a burden. They are, because they are your creation. You are responsible for them at every level. You are responsible for their life, 
for their existence, for the duration of their existence. You are the one that determines their creation and their dissolution. And it goes hand in hand. You know, as the creator, you know, you have the responsibilities for both ends, the beginning and the ending. And you must take that responsibility. You must never forget one of your elementaries. I suggest that you write down at the moment, the time of creation, all the details of your elementary and keep that record and refer back to that record. You know, you don't want to ever forget an elementary and just leave it dangling, you know. Really, at the time of creation, you should set the conditions and the time of its ending. And you must have that determined before it is created. You can create an elemental that you send out and have come back to you when it has accomplished its task and then give it a new task if you wish. You know, elementaries can, can live for decades if you really want them to. Um, but, you are the creator. You are responsible for your elementaries. They are a very real form of life. They have a often physical body, an astral body, a mental body, and an animating spirit, which you give to the being, you know, with the brilliance, the aid of the brilliance. Okay? Uh, working, working with the brilliance in this way is very important work. The brilliance is, above all else, creative. That is what the brilliance is. It's the creativity in the universe condensed into a substance. Um, so, uh, it's important work. And you must keep track and take responsibility for them. At the end of this section of the physical um, uh, section of step seven, Barton wrote about the animation of pictures. And, you know, you can animate anything. I can animate, you know, this crystal. I can animate this uh, figure here. Um, etc. You can animate anything, a picture, um, something that is passed from person to person can be animated. Uh, yeah. Again, you know, use your imagination, <clears throat> your creative imagination in that regard. And I found, have found that work especially useful. Uh, animating things, uh, yeah, it's fun. I had a lot of fun with that. So <clears throat> that is step seven. Um, yeah, it can take. It can be quick. It can be really quick, depending on you. Um, you know, what is your mental balance like? Uh, what are your mental senses, like, or your astral senses like? Uh, how easy for you is it going to be to create elementals that should be, or elementaries, it should be very easy, especially if you've done the work with the elementals. If not, it'll take a little longer, because you have to uh, accustom yourself to working with the brilliance, and you have to master the brilliance. So, who knows? You will find out. <laughs> you will find out. And you'll have a lot of fun. It's... Uh, it's not exactly fun to have developed subtle senses, but it's fascinating. It opens you to a whole new realm of information. Um, yeah, and the 
mental equilibrium, you, you will feel yourself maturing. You will become a more mature human being with the mental equilibrium of the elements and creating elementaries. Just, that is a lot of fun, you know. It's, elementaries can be cute little creatures, you know. Uh, it's really up to you uh, what you create. Um, and hopefully it will be really beautiful things, really cool, productive, creative things. So, I will see you back here at the end of all that for step eight. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs>